This is WOCA, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. minutes before 11 o'clock. Nice looking uh, Monday. It's only Monday. <laughs> I'm jumping ahead. I guess I want Halloween to show up, huh? Yeah, I it's exciting said, this almost, year. almost said Wednesday. Natasha Solomons has written a book that you will want to read. It's called House of Gold. And how many times have I introduced an author that way? I don't ever say that, right? Right. But this is one. I don't know. I, I was really taken in by this story. You know, I'm a, I'm a chick flick lover at heart. You know that, right? Oh, yes, I do. N- Natasha is a screenwriter, it says here, and a New York Times bestselling author. Well, that that's handy to write a book and be able to write the screenplay also. <laughs> this book would be a good movie. I wonder if there's any thoughts about that. I hope so. Uh, it's called House of Gold. Natasha, good morning. It's nice to have you on the show. Thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. Where are you? Where are you calling from? I'm from Dorset in deepest, darkest England. Oh, my gosh. Well, thank you for calling from so far away. Pleasure. Do you know what was a big hit in this country? I don't know if you knew this, but that Downton Abbey show was big here. And I think that's why your book is big here. Well, Julian Fellows is is a neighbour in Dorset, so um, so yes, maybe he can put a word in for me. So there's something in the water. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I think so. Or or in the gin, or in the tea. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, uh, so t- tell us about the storyline here. I know it takes place in uh, the World War Two years. I mean, World one. War One. So sorry, World War One years, right? Yes, well, it, um, it starts in 1911, and um, the Goldbaum family are the confidants of emperors and governments with a banking house and every European capital. But despite their power and their wealth, they're never quite trusted, and they remain outsiders because they're Jewish. And for their part, the Goldbaums know that only family can be trusted. And so for that reason, Greta from the Austrian dynasty is sent to London to marry her cousin, a man who she's never met. And right from the start, the marriage looks like it's going to be a disaster. But soon the First World War is looming. So really, it's a novel about power, about family, love, war, you know, the the small themes. Yeah. Is is this something that you uh is is it historical in nature other than the the setting? Or, or, or is that story based on anything that really happened? Well, there were Jewish banking houses sort of set across Europe um, at this time. Um, there were there were a few of them, probably most famously um, the Rothschilds, but there were there were other um, sort of Jewish banking houses, and um, I use sort of an amalgamation of of all of them to um, to base the the Goldbaum house on. So yes, that that part of it is 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 real, and the wealth that they have is also is is real and so is the sense of otherness that kind of that sort of combination of being both incredibly powerful and incredibly rich and yet never quite trusted never quite part of those kind of really um trusted families because they are despite everything they're considered very other very different and they're not quite absorbed into kind of the echelons of power either in britain or in vienna or in germany or even in Paris, they're always kept slightly, slightly at the margin. And uh, you had to do a, a lot of research for the book, and uh, you had to even uh, investigate some of the documents that were held behind the Iron Curtain. Yes, that was difficult because um, my Russian is um, non-existent, so I had to rely a lot on translations and getting friends to help um, who could speak Russian and um, lots of forums and asking people people to help with that. And um, my research was made slightly trickier because usually um, I research in kind of a great hurry and excitement and then start writing at the same time. But this time it was slightly different because in my broken finger method, I broke my finger in the car door whilst reading oh. an email and had, yeah, I had to have surgery on my finger. So I was completely out of action, could do no typing at all for um, a couple of months. 
I kept thinking, oh, it'll be fine. I can type with nine fingers. Nine will be plenty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> nine wasn't plenty. <laughs> when, when we so um, I had... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I think I interrupted you. I didn't mean to do that. There's a little delay between when we hear you and when we speak, so I apologize for that. Um, well, what I was going to say is that when we read your book, we go there, and not only to the place, but also to the time. And then the, and this happens to me a lot when I read a compelling book, I find myself still there, even after I've put the book down and I'm driving home, let's say. Uh, Does that happen for you as the writer? Do you find yourself there while you're writing it and then have to snap back to reality after you take your break or whatever? Yes, except I don't snap back. I get sort of time travel jet lag. And then I have to go and pick up my kids. And I'm standing doing the school run. And I have to explain to people that I'm really sorry. Part of me is still kind of marooned <laughs> on the eastern front. You know, witnessing something really terrible. And, um, and I'm trying to listen to what's happened during my kids' day. And how somebody got the wrong sandwich. And I'm, and I'm just, I'm really confused. Because I'm, I'm, I'm still partly in Siberia. And yes, no, time travel jet lag, it's, it's a thing, definitely. And uh, you ha- also bring up in your book that some of the casualties of war were women, especially women who were giving childbirth because all of the uh, medical uh, like sutures and things of the time were reserved for the men. Yes, absolutely. So during the First World War, there's this sort of hierarchy of bodies. And the hospitals, they just started to trying to have a few more women's hospitals during the first, sort of just prior to the First World War in, in the UK. But they were all closed, really, and given aside to, to men coming back from the front. So immediately, sort of maternal death rates started to climb. And so women like Greta into positions of privilege and who really sort of believed that this was, um, you know, terribly unfair and that sort of women and women's bodies mattered too, turned over corners of their, their houses and um, their estates to try and take care of, of women and, and children because they really are the kind of the unsung, sung, forgotten casualties of war who, um, the sort of, whose deaths um, really sort of disappear beneath wow. the radar who aren't sort of recorded on, on, on any statistics. And so I kind of, I, I wanted to, to, to write about them too and make them part of Greta's story. So, so in addition to just being a great storyteller, you're also making commentary uh, perhaps to keep us uh, aware of what we could become if, we don't, if we're not careful. Uh, the, our treatment of women and our treatment of Jewish people, for example, are two areas. Um, I think certainly in terms of sort of the Jewish themes, I, f- I found that sort of more and more terrifying as I was writing because this was supposed to be a, a piece of historical fiction. And as I was writing and um, sort of even in the UK with sort of things in Europe, it just began to feel less and less historical. And um, that made it sort of very, very sort of uncomfortable. And certainly compared to some of my previous novels, it, it, it felt more sort of dangerous writing about, um, you know, conspiracy theories and um, ideas of sort of, yeah, sort of the, the, the hostility with which this sort of Jewish family yeah. um, was held. And it, it, it felt uncomfortably resonant in a way that when I started, I hadn't expected. And, um, and certainly some of the research that I was doing and sort of to read about the kind of blood libel myths and I, I thought that I was reading kind of research that was sort of 19th century. And then I realized, no, no, it was published a couple of years ago by sort of pseudo universities. And that was really chilling. And I sort of, some of the stuff, you know, I'd have to walk away from my desk and take, take a little break and come back to it because you just, you, you do feel kind of queasy. And you do have lighthearted moments in the book, too, about women's underwear, the fashion of the day. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. You, 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 can't, you can't write this kind, of, this kind of novel without a good few knicker jokes. Exactly. And, um, and I think also when, when you're writing um, books sort of with Jewish themes, sort of, um, you've got to have humor. That's one of, that's one of the kind of uh, the great traditions. And, um, 
and I think those, those those things go go well together. And so yeah, that um, I always find that, that that seeps through. So it was I had I had huge fun writing this book. <laughs> so once you're done with the book, do you even want to write a screenplay of the book, or or do you let that go to somebody else? No, well, the pilot is written, and um, actually, it's um, it's been um, bought by the channel who were behind um, Downton Abbey in the UK. So, um, oh wow, we'll see what happens? So we'll see this soon. Okay. Oh my gosh. Wait. Well, Natasha, it's an honor to have you on our show. You have got a big following here. Uh, the phones were lit up just now, asking me if I wanted to give the book away, and yes, I do. So I have the book here. If, I, if one person <laughs> wants to call back, I will leave it here for you at the radio station. Um, I did find it on Amazon. Do you have a website of your own, Natasha? I do, natashasolomons.com. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Thank and, you so much. Um, and I'm, I'm also on Instagram. Okay. Thank right. you very much for having me. Th- thank you, Natasha. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Here is your one-minute news brief. Governor Rick Scott directed the Florida Highway Patrol to increase patrols of state troopers at religious institutions across Florida following a shooting at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh that left 11 people dead. 